It's Tuesday, it's the Betting Edge with the Prez. I'm Lawrence Presman, happy and honored to host this show. Great show today. Uh, Drew Martin from SportsMemo.com and Ralph Michaels from WagerTalk.com. We also have two really good promotions for you guys, including a last day promotion for Ralph Michaels. Uh, on today's show, we're gonna talk a couple of college football games. Uh, the World Series game that goes tonight, an NBA game, and two NFL games. There's so much on tap. I'm honored and privileged to bring in my guests. Let's start with the young man, Drew Martin, uh, behind the back cap, looking hip, dude. What's up? Happy Tuesday morning to you, Prez. I'm uh, doing good out here in Las Vegas, just enjoying the uh, cooler weather. But uh, getting after it in terms of sports betting, man, great time of year. So thanks for having me on, Prez. Always, brother. And you know what? You're doing such a great job with the shows that you are hosting right now. Uh, we're going to be giving you even more work. Uh, so if you have a, a woman in your life, you might want to give me her phone number so I can call and explain to her that Drew will be unavailable until April. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you, if you could help me take her out, you know, uh, get, get her some nice things that would, that would help as well, Brad. Uh, yeah, no, be a no. Um, <laughs> but listen, I'm happy to get you out of trouble. Uh, Ralph Michaels, you are the busiest man around. Uh, you do a daily show with Teddy covers, uh, on sports grid. Uh, that shows awesome. Uh, you're, you're a co-host with me on the NFL presidential address. You make a, feature appearance on the number one show we have bet on it and you have an incredible promotion up uh talk to us about that today is the last day well it is the last day you know last week we talked about it on the on here and on the presidential address and i want everyone on board for the college basketball season i do a lot of plays i average 350 plays a season the college basketball season tips off next tuesday 147 games next tuesday I'll be having a wager talk guide available up Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, Drew kept me out last night too late, so it cost me a night of work last night. So it's Drew's fault that the, the guide's a day late. But RM400 gets you $400 off a college basketball season, normally $995. You're paying $595. For the full college basketball season through the national championship at 9 a.m. Pacific tomorrow, that code goes away. And just to let you know, if you miss it today, RM300 will work tomorrow to get you 300 bucks off. Why not do it today and save the extra hundred dollars? Ah, there you go. Not only an incredible handicapper and an awesome dude, but a man who can sell. Drew, it's $2 Tuesdays at Sports Memo and Wager Talk. Tell us about the feature handicapper. Yeah, actually, it's uh, Andrew McGinnis. He's on a hot run right now. I think 16 and 2. So 17 so and 2. Okay, even better. So, uh, yeah, he's on a hot run. And actually, he put up a play. It moved three points. So we had to take it down. A little bit of a snafu. Everybody was credited who bought the play. And uh, he's up with a new one. So that one's $2 right now at sportsmemo.com. And when you buy it, you also get a uh, coupon code for every other play on the board for half off. So we have some f other 5% plays going tonight as well. Alex B. Smith is very hot on the ice. So uh, check it out. You get good discounts all across the board. Uh, Gianni the Greek, he's our $2 Tuesday at wagertalk.com, and he is on fire in everything. Uh, he's got a big NFL uh, early move release up. Uh, you can get it over at wagertalk.com for $2. Plus, again, you'll get a coupon code for something else. Uh, boys, let's get straight to the show. We've got lots to talk about. Um, throughout the show, I will be talking about other uh, handicappers and what they're doing as well as my big run. Uh, well, I'll go to you first. Navy minus 27 against UConn. I'm not going to set this game up. Go. Well, you know, uh, the Navy team, often people, people think, well, Navy's a rush Ooh. offense. Wisconsin's a rush offense. They're not going to be able to get margin on a team. But what happens is, you have an offensive line that continually is to beat on the defense. And if Navy gets a big lead, what happens? Well, they bring in their second and third string, but what do they run? The exact same office that the offense that they practiced year round. So I actually do like situations like this where you have a running team against a team with a very poor rush defense. 
although UConn has shown some life and, and you know, they're, they're off the win against UMass, we have to put it in perspective, it was UMass, the lowest power rating team I've had on the board in the last five years. They're that bad. So, you know, uh, it's not going to make my card, but I have a definite lean with Navy as they extend the lead in the second half. Uh, Drew, you with Ralph on this one? I, I do agree with him sidewise. If you made me bet it sidewise, Prez, I would be on Navy for, for the same reasons that he was just talking about in terms of second half. They're going to be running that same offense. I would actually look at it more, though, from a totals perspective and go towards the over here. Ralph mentioned UConn's porous rush defense. I think Navy's going to get theirs. And a lot of time w when betting college football totals with the military academies, you got to worry about limited possessions. However, I, I, I think UConn's rush defense is so bad that Navy's going to be putting the ball in the end zone. Plus the fact Ralph spoke to it as well. UConn, if there is a plus for him, it is their offense. Their quarterback, he, he's pretty mobile. He can throw it pretty good. And I think that they're going to have some success, be able to put the ball in the end zone here. Weather looks to be pretty decent, not too much uh, participation or uh, win there. So I think that uh, th this total is just hanging a little too low with uh, the expected limited possessions. But I think it goes uh, over in the UConn Navy game, Prez. Uh, guys, Tony Finn is on a 10-1 and Major League Baseball run. He has a play up tonight uh, in the baseball game, which we're going to discuss shortly. Uh, but honestly, 10-1 uh, and run. I mean, I'm on an 8-0 and run uh, in baseball. 10-1 uh, and is almost as good. Uh, so head over to wagertalk.com. Check out Tony Finn. He's uh, got a play up tonight for the baseball game. Our Ralph, an undefeated SMU team is on the road playing Memphis, and this game should be one of the best games of the week. It should be very high scoring, uh, but what we're seeing now is uh, I think the schwinter pucker factor for SMU is getting super tight. Uh, they were outgained by Houston by 122 yards. Uh, I, you know, I'm staying away from this game, Ralph, but my gut feel is on Memphis and the over. I can't ag agree more, pre uh, Prez, with the pressure on SMU. You know, prior to last week, SMU was a play on team. Well, what changed last week? Boise State lost to BYU. That made SMU the number one group of five team. And uh, you're undefeated. I don't care who the coach is. Sonny Dykes is a great coach. But there's no way you can tell your kids, don't look past this team, because they're going, if we beat Memphis, all we have is East Carolina, and then we have Navy, and then we have Tulane, and then we're going to a New Year's Six Bowl. It changes the entire dynamic of a team. That's why they had a season low last week of 388 yards. That's why they had a season low last week, you know, uh, with 203 yards passing. They struggled with the pressure. Now they're playing Memphis. And my power ratings have this game at pick. So I am leaning SMU, but I do have to adjust my power ratings by about a point and a half because ES, ESPN game day, while it may have lost some of its luster, when it makes an appearance for the first time in a place like Memphis, it energizes that program. And with ESPN crowd there, I'm so used to seeing the Liberty Bowl and you see seats from the 20s on empty. There will be a crowd. They will have a student section. They will be motivated. Now, you talked about a high-scoring game, and SMU is number two in the country in plays per game. Memphis has played a very slow pace. They're very efficient, but they're averaging only 65 plays per game. They are not in a hurry. What's happened is they broke a lot of big plays. I actually look for both teams to play with pressure. Memphis thinks if they win this game and what happens moving forward, they have a shot to be the group of five team. This almost has a, a championship feel to it for me. And I think both teams are going to be conservative, yeah. not want to make the mistakes, run that ball first, not throw into situations they shouldn't have. And with an inflated total because of what these two have done so far this season, I actually like the under. Uh, so you disagree with everything that I said, even though you start. You, I, I agreed with SMU having the sphincter type pressure on them. And then I stopped listening to you because I agreed with that. And I said, holy shit, I'm agreeing with Prez. What's wrong with me here? Uh, I love that you hold a pen in your hand while you talk. I'm going to try that technique. Okay. Uh, Drew. 
I, I like it from a side perspective. I, I like Memphis here, Prez, so I guess I do agree with you in, uh, on, the, on that front. And, and really the reason is because Brady White, their quarterback, he's not a quarterback I want in the situation where he's like punching up against an SEC team, against a defensive line that's going to get after him. I, I, I don't think he's necessarily the tough quarterback that's going to uh, kind of drive his team to victory. But against teams that uh, are, are lacking a little bit on defense, which I think SMU is here, you know, they're giving up nearly – 30 points per game. Their offense is the one driving this uh, this 8-0 record here. I, I, I think Memphis is going to really take it to them offensively. Um, this is a this is an offense that that can score. You you touched on the fact of uh, big play potential. They're not necessarily going you know major up tempo, but they have some playmakers on the outside. And the fact game day is going to be there. The Liberty Bowl is going to be rocking. Uh, we've seen the Liberty Bowl against Ole Miss, and it's packed house. I would I would look for it to be like that. T- type of atmosphere and uh, SMU is in for their most difficult game of the season in my perspective. And uh, I think Memphis rolls here. Hey, Prez, I want to jump in for one second. Uh, For those people that don't know, we're just going to do a quick plug for wager talk. I post a college college football stat compare sheet up. And when you're analyzing this game, I want you to look at it and look at how stats can be deceiving. SMU has played the number 86 schedule. Memphis has played the number 97. So SMU has played a little tougher schedule. And SMU is better at yards per game. They're plus 117 yards per game compared to 96 yards per game. But when you look over at the yards per play difference in the stat compare sheet at Wager Talk, SMU is plus 0.8 yards per play. Memphis is plus 2.1. So you have a far more dynamic team. And the difference, if you look at the plays per game, which I list on the sheet, SMU 83.8, Memphis 65.3. So you look at the yards per game and you think, oh, SMU is the much better team. You look at the yards per play, which I think is a more important stat, and you can see the difference. Make sure that's up every Sunday, guys. Make sure you check it out. Incredible tool at this point in the year when you're trying to compare teams that have played different strengths of schedules. Uh, he's Ralph Michaels, and you can find him at wagertalk.com. Uh, Drew Martin from sportsmemo.com. And guys, just to remember, just make sure uh, you play Ralph Michaels' college basketball. Um, you know, we pushed the crap out of Dave Koken's college football in August. We told you guys there is nobody else to play in college football. He is the Mac Daddy of that sport. He is 62% nine weeks in. We were right. And we are right again about Ralph Michaels. Uh, I don't think there'll be a more, a better return on investment uh, than Ralph Michaels College Hoop season. You get $400 off of the price. Uh, Use the promo code RM400. And we are about to have a scroll change. Scroll change, promo change, done. Oh, and it's me. We'll talk about that in a sec. Houston minus 170 versus Washington tonight. Uh, Could be the last baseball game of a fun season. But I don't know. I don't think Houston is a good bet here, Ralph. Uh, I'll give you my quick take. Um, Look, uh, they have all the momentum in the world. They've won three in a row. They've won those games handily. But we've been down this path before. Strasburg is an incredible pitcher. Uh, He's on the mound tonight. Uh, obviously, Verlander is uh, his equal, but, you know, Drew and Ralph, we spoke about this exact game a week ago, and uh, I said, is there a likely chance this game's going to come down to the bullpen? And if that's the case, I'm going to put the dog in my pocket, and that's where I'm going, Ralph. I like the under, you know. Uh you know, we've seen we've seen Houston's bats, you know, come to life a little bit the last couple of days with 10 plus hits each of the last three games. But, you know, I think you look at Verlander, he's 13 and 25 over on the season and Strasburg's over under numbers. He's actually had more overs than unders on the season. Now he's 19 overs and 17 unders. But this is a deciding game. You know, this is a game where we are going to get the best of it. And while I like the under, I'm actually going to go first five under just to make sure I'm involving these yes, two starters. Yes, great call. I think, we, I think we got two workhorses. We're not going to get the bullpens involved. 
Uh, I, I, and I think when you have two pitchers, elite pitchers like this in this type of game, with all the pressure in the world, we're going to see the cream rise. And I like under the first five. Uh, Drew, you uh, kill it in baseball all the time. Uh, how do you take this game apart? Um, I, I, I go, I, I lean towards the underdog here, Prez. I, I don't disagree necessarily with the under. It's just, you know, heading to the American League ballpark, the DH, the low total. It, it's something that did keep me off of it just because I, I think it gets a little tricky down around this number. I, I think there's a little more value here at the big plus price. I mean, we got Washington on the road now, but I believe what the, the road team's undefeated in the World Series going against Verlander, who I believe is winless in the World Series uh, in his career. So overall, I think Strasburg has a little bit more of an advantage over the opposing lineup. And the fact that the Nationals bullpen outside of uh, what last game has been pretty decent. So overall at a plus 160, yeah. mid 160s price tag here, I think the Nationals are, are, are worth a small bet. Yeah, and I, like I said, I'm with you on that, uh, Drew. I like the Nationals tonight too and Ralph I agree on the under as well uh, and I love the fact that you're only going to take it in the first uh, five innings but I have no issue if you guys listening want to bet the under on the entire game uh, guys I'm on an 18 and 5 all sports run I'm on a 6 and 2 hockey run I have two hockey bets up for Tuesday night I'm on a 6-2 and two NFL run. I'm on an 8-0 and no baseball run, and I did not uh, release a play tonight to my customers, but I am at personally going to be betting a uh, half unit on Washington and a full unit on the under. Uh, and I'm on a 3-0 and o college football run. Um, my monthly package is regularly priced at $325. You can have $100 off. Just use the promo code PREZ225. That's P-R-E-Z or Z, depending on where you're from, 225. Why is that funny, Drew? I've never heard that, but like Z or Z, what's the background behind that? Okay, so uh, interesting you may ask. Uh, it's called the arrogance of America. Um, okay. What do you think is the actual official pronunciation of that letter? Which letter are we talking about exactly? This one. Z. Yeah. Yes. So you think the official pronunciation of that letter is Z? Z as in Zorro, yeah. So now we're not only is it the arrogance of America, it's also the xenophobia of America. And just so you know, Drew, xenophobia is not spelt with a Z. It's spelt with an X. Uh, the official... So English was created by Englishmen and they got to call every letter what they wanted to. Your parents named you Drew. They didn't name you Drew. They named you Drew. So your name is Drew. The letter Z was actually named Z. Therefore it is actually a Z. You Americans changed it to Z. You are the only country in the entire universe that calls Z a Z. You did not know that? No, I didn't. Yeah. And, and time is oh, up. Oh, shut up, uh, Ralph. Um, I got one more thing to add about the letter Z. Uh, the crazy part for me is why did you Americans call it a Z? It's hard enough on the phone when you call someone and you're like, uh, my uh, name is spelled E D G Z. Like what? E D G Z. Any other letters that rhyme with E G and D? Come on, Z makes sense to me. Anyway, well, fine. My time is up. My rant is over. Although I do want to rant about the stupidity of NFL coaches later on, if you will permit me, Ralph. Uh, Atlanta. Two and one host uh, on the road playing Miami. They're also two and one. Atlanta's on a back to back. And guys, hockey, the back to back, 28% chance of winning in a back to back game in ice hockey. Ralph, what kind of statistic are, are, is there in the NBA for back to back games? Well, Press, I'm glad you asked. Well, that. I thank you. We didn't even rehearse. 
um, I looked it up, and you know the difference is we're early in the season. And Drew and I talked about this last night. When you have back-to-back games, you have the exact same mentality as you just said, Prez. Back-to-back games are tough to win. Well, that's bullshit. In November, when teams are still fresh and teams have their fresh legs and you have your full roster, away teams on a back the last five years have covered 54% of the time. You're getting value because of inflated lines with teams playing back-to-back. You also look at this Atlanta team team, which has played great defense, holding all three foes to under 42%. They're 3-0 and against the spread. They're 0-3 over under. I like the Hawks here. Yeah, and I'm with you, Ralph. And, you know, I mean, it'd be interesting to find out what the actual percentage on the back-to-back is over the entire year. I mean, it makes total sense that in November or late October when the legs are fresh, uh, these back-to-backs don't matter that much. Uh, but they have to matter over a long stretch of time. Uh, Here you go, Prez. What? I've got the number for you. Go. When a team has no days of rest since the start of the 2015 season, this is an honest-to-God looking at the database, 912 ATS wins, 912 ATS losses, 47 pushes. So you are looking at... An exact 50%. Yeah, it's amazing. Last, last year in the NBA, it was 198, 204, and 11. So 49.3%. So a five-year period, exactly 50. Going back to last year only, 49.3%. So again, not worth adjusting your handicap. It's pretty much a toss-up. You have to look at each situation differently phenomenal stuff man i mean drew it's like <laughs> yeah that's a tough follow that's great stuff there ralph but i mean as far as you know pointing towards winners in this game i i would just add on the fact you know atlanta out the gate this is the one team i bet on in terms of season win yeah totals. i think they're great i think atlanta is a better team than miami every night of the week I, I mean, I, I I agree. So, so, so getting plus eight here, I, it's just it, it's kind of like you know pops off the page at me. They're yeah. three and zero ATS. I'm kind of surprised that this number is what it is. I like the Hawks here as well, Prez. Yeah, we're all on the same page on this play. Uh, guys, make sure to head over to SportsMemo.com to take advantage of Andrew McGinnis on a seventeen and two all sports run. He's got a play up tonight. It's only two dollars. Uh, and Gianni the Greek is the $2 handicapper over at wagertalk.com. Uh, let's talk some NFL football, gentlemen, and then we'll call it a show. Uh, I think this is going to be a fun game. Uh, Tennessee plus four against Carolina. The over and under is 41 and a half. It has moved up a little bit from 40, which is a bit of a surprise. Uh, I think that might be the Tannehill factor because we did see Tennessee throw the ball a little bit more uh, last week uh, than they normally did. Um, Ralph, I'll go to you first. Um, What do you like in this game? I do like Tennessee. And, you know, so much was made of Kyle Allen winning his first five games and, and just being so good. And on the presidential address, you know, I addressed that issue saying, well, you know, he only had 297 yards at Houston and he only had 268 yards at Tampa Bay. And what happened? He only had 280 yards last week. So we've seen that he has his issues and you need McCaffrey to run the ball for him to be successful. And, you know, yes, your stats and McCaffrey, they had 6.8 yards per carry, which you think is impressive. But in garbage time, those don't count. I think McCaffrey is going to struggle against Tennessee. Tennessee. I think Tennessee's offense is better with Tannehill. Uh, I, I think the rush game of Henry will do better against Carolina's defense and vice versa. Panthers are allowing 5.0 yards per carry. I'm never going to play on a favorite that's allowing 5.0 yards per carry because other teams can run their offense on that. So, And now Kyle Allen, for the first time, has some adversity. He had a one, three ratio and, you know, he's thinking, well, oh my God, all these wins. And now I lost and now I come back and now, you know, now we're only four and three. We lose this game. We're four and four. A young quarterback has those thoughts in his head moving forward. I'm not talking about seeing ghosts, Mr. Darnold, but you know, that's the type of thought process that moves in. I truly believe that. So I do lean Tennessee. Yeah. Here. And I'm with you, Drew. And I think the matchup, uh, um, Ralph, and I think the matchup favors Tennessee as well. I mean, you mentioned, 
uh, Carolina's run defense. And I think they're going to get a huge dose of Derrick Henry. And, and for that reason, I like the under two, Drew. Uh, 41 and a half seems like a big number to me uh, with uh, Tennessee involved. I know they got over that number last week, but barely. Uh, I'm with Ralph on Tennessee, and I like under the total. Yeah, you know, Tennessee, and, and, and we found change here with at, at the quarterback position going to Tannehill. So I always try to find, you know, concentrate on when that happened and going forward, trying to get an edge in the marketplace. But, Prez, I, I guess I, I would go towards your first point when you were introducing the game in terms of they were throwing the ball more. So that actually makes me look more towards the over here. It's a game I haven't bet yet. But um, overall, I, I look towards the over just because, you know, w when a team looks to throw the ball more, I guess with their quote unquote backup quarterback coming in for uh, the, the starter that they just took out, you know, that's going to lead to more uh, clock stoppages and bigger plays down the field. So I guess I, 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 I would disagree with you in terms of I'm just leaning towards the over here in this. Yeah, matchup. you know, one one point that, you know, you said backup, but you're probably talking at the beginning of the season, you're probably talking about the number you know, 33 quarterback, you're probably talking about the best backup in the league. I think if you took everyone's quarterbacks and you listed their starter and their number two, I would think you have a far majority, almost 100% saying that Tannehill is closer to Mariota than any other number two is to any other number one in the, in the, in the NFL. Oh, you mean Teddy Bridgewater isn't super close to Drew Brees? I'm no, kidding, I, I Ralph. Would, oh, I'm well, I, you know, sometimes, Prez, you say shit off the wall, so I don't know whether to believe no, you or Ralph, not when you talk. No, Ralph, I throw shit on the wall. Uh, Cleveland could be Freddie Kitchen's last game, if not this week, the next. Uh, you know that um, Dave Koken made a point in the college football betting show, and guys, check out that show with Teddy Covers and Dave Koken. Myself, we do a college football betting show every Tuesday. It's up now at uh, Wager Talk TV, our YouTube channel. Uh, I don't, I think it was 58. Uh, the key number was 58. Ralph, Drew, Odell Beckham Jr. is the 58th most targeted wide receiver in football. Think about that. Uh -huh. Not catches, targets. Uh, this offense is a disaster. They cannot find any rhythm. Uh, Freddie Kitchens is in way over his head. And yet, I like Cleveland plus the three points. Ralph? Um, I'm looking up that stat. I, I don't believe that number. So uh, It's either 54 I'll, I'll or 58. So while you look, okay. while uh, you look that up that stat, Ralph, Drew, what's your take on this Cleveland-Denver game? Um, I, one, it's a fascinating stat and it, 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 it's very surprising. I, I would look at this from Cleveland. I don't know, man, Baker Mayfield, what's going on there at the quarterback position, just two and five, both straight up and ATS. I'm not a big fan of his in the NFL. I think, uh, just the matchup from college to NFL doesn't suit his, uh, kind of athletic ability very well, but overall I'm not looking to bet on Cleveland and Denver, you know, the change at the quarterback position, wh what's going on there. Um, when we start talking about, you know, starter versus backup and the uh, power ratings difference, I'm kind of perplexed here with the Broncos and what to do with them from a power rating standpoint. So as of right now, this isn't a game I bet on, but I do lead with the home team here uh, catching the points just because Cleveland overall for me isn't a bet on team. Yeah, right and, and, and listen, I mean, I'll tell you, you know, Denver's defense is nasty, nasty. They were all over Indianapolis last week. Uh, here is the problem. Uh, we saw this with Jacksonville, you know, and I and uh, last year. And I think this Denver defense is just getting frustrated and annoyed. Uh, this team has lost cl all, all, every game they've lost has been one to three points, give or take. Uh, they're all being they're all being lost in the last twenty seconds or so. Uh, this defense has got to be very frustrated. Denver cannot move the ball at all. And look, Cleveland's got a really strong defense. They came out against New England, uh, three turnovers. They were down uh, really quick. And then they held New England the entire game uh, to try to mount a comeback. You know, I like the under in this game, but, you know, I can't take Denver minus three. I just, I, I don't believe this team can put up even 17 points. 
Uh, Ralph, did you find the stat and what's your take on this game? I did, and I feel bad. I never mean to call anyone out, but Odell Beckham is number 16 in the NFL in targets. Well, then Dave is wrong, not me. I mean, now, me. receptions, receptions, he's, he's 16 in targets. He may very well be that number in receptions. So that's probably the difference or the miscommunication. Yes, he's number 16 in targets, but he's number 80 or 90 in the number of receptions he had. So normally you're used to throwing the ball to Beckham and he catches everything. That hasn't been the case. Some of that is timing with the new quarterback and learning where Beckham likes the ball and Baker throwing behind people. But with that said, I don't think enough's made about the new quarterback. You have Brandon Allen. Brandon Allen wasn't with this team in the preseason. He was with the L.A. Rams. They picked him up from waivers September the 1st. Now he's starting. You're going to run the ball. You have a conservative game plan already. You're one of the slowest-paced teams, and you have a brand-new quarterback making a start that you know he's going to be your quarterback because, remember, they drafted several quarterbacks that got injured. So this is a brand-new guy learning the system. And in Cleveland, you know, their offense is just not the same. You have... Listen to these last three games. Minus four turnover. They, this isn't their turnovers. This is their turnover differential. Minus four against San Fran. Minus three against Seattle. Minus three against New England. And they were minus three in Tennessee. That means in four losses, they were minus 13 turnovers. I think Cleveland gets a little more conservative. Baker doesn't want to throw any more turnovers. Uh, they run the ball. I think Denver runs the ball. Oh, yeah, and let's not forget that stat. In Denver's last 17 games... They are 1-15-1 and one over under, and Prez will tell you the one over. But I did have them on the under this past Sunday, Ralph, Good for a 5-2 deal. Deal. Sunday. Uh, and guys, I'm on a huge run, 18-5 and five all sports run. Uh, you get $100 off of my monthly package, 225. Use the promo code PREZ225. Uh, Ralph Michaels, um, RM400, $400, $400 off of his uh, college basketball season package. And Drew Martin, next time you're on the show, I'm gonna, it's going to just be a Drew Martin promotional bonanza. Oh, I can't wait, Prez. I cannot wait. Okay, well, hey, guess what, guys? It, next Tuesday when we're on the show, Drew, guess what it is? The first night of college basketball with 147 games. Oh, wow. College basketball is my sport, too. That's my jam. So I'm ready to rock. Yeah, man. well, you know what? We're, we're, Ralph, we're going to take apart all 147 games. Uh, we should start in an hour. It'll be ready for next Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you figure, you figure three minutes a game, so that's 300, 420, 461 minutes. So that's going to be eight hours for us to get that podcast in. Guys, Chris, great show. To Vegas? Drew, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Ralph, you as well. Uh, NFL Presidential Address will be up tomorrow with Ralph and myself. Um, puck Time is up at uh, Wager Talk TV, our YouTube channel. Uh, same with the College Football Betting Show. And just a quick uh, mention, guys, the Betting Edge and Puck Time tomorrow will be up later than usual. I have, a, uh, I have to take my kid to the doctor and I can't get out of it. Uh, so it should be up uh, by 3, 3.30 Eastern time. Uh, boys, thanks again for an outstanding show. I love you both uh, and kick ass. Prez, out.